Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. And today I'm very excited to do a review of the laser cam from Mintian. It's a super useful device that can add Wi-Fi functionality, mobile control, as well as camera placement, flame detection, and time-lapse captures to your laser engraver. So what do I think of it? Well, let's find out. Mintian is a company you may be familiar with from their Beagle camera for 3D printers. I was an early adopter of that device and actually own a few Beagle cameras, which are how I control many of my 3D printers. It's also how I've been able to film some time lapses with my 3D printers. I absolutely love my Beagle cameras, so when Mintian reached out to me to check out their laser cam, I jumped on the opportunity and I wasn't disappointed. The laser cam comes with everything you need to turn your laser into a Wi-Fi camera controlled device. There is already a large list of compatible machines on their website from top names such as Xtool or Tur, Atomstack, Sculptfun, among many others. Essentially, if your laser can be controlled via G-code in Lightburn or Laser Gerbil, then you should be able to use this camera to control your laser. The camera itself is small and comes with a tripod mount for different mounting options that come with the device. On the side is a slot for the included 32GB microSD card to be able to store the G-code files of your project as well as the time-lapse videos you can make with the camera. The front of the camera has a way to manually rotate to focus the lens to make sure you stay focused on the job that you are working on without it trying to constantly autofocus with the moving laser and the laser flashes. It can record video at 1080p in H.264 or MJPEG video compression at up to 25 frames per second. The camera can also automatically switch between regular color recording and night vision mode based on the available lighting. The camera also comes with a Bluetooth flame detector that can alert you to a fire and stop the job. There are essentially two different ways to set up this camera to your laser. The first is to set up the camera in Lightburn that can be used for positioning of your objects. The camera is mounted on the included overhead arm that simply mounts to the front of the laser. This allows you to see your work area and to be able to place your jobs exactly where they show up on the camera. This requires you to calibrate the camera lens and the camera alignment in Lightburn. That is what the cardboard with the dots and the paper cards are for that come inside the kit. It's a pretty straightforward process and in the end you are left with a full camera controlled laser. However, I do believe that this setup still requires the camera to be plugged into the computer at all times for the camera to work. Even still, this is a great option for those who want to use the camera as a precise tool to control their lasers. The second way to use the laser cam, and honestly is my personal favorite way to use the camera, is to use it more as a monitoring and file sending device. I really just want to place the camera in a location where I can see the workable area and keep track of my jobs without hovering over the laser. This also works great when using an enclosure which I almost always do. I just rely on absolute coordinates of the laser to make sure I know where the job is going to engrave. Then I just have to place my item down and send the job to it. Hookup is really simple. First you hook up the laser cam to a USB-C connection and provide it power. Then you hook up your laser to power and attach the USB-A connection to the laser. But instead of plugging this other end into the computer, you plug it into the back of the laser cam since it will now be controlling the device. So here's the really exciting part of the laser cam. It can be controlled in three ways. The first is what I already mentioned where you can use the camera directly in Lightburn to control the machine through Lightburn. The second way is from an app on your smartphone that will connect to the laser cam over Wi-Fi and allow you to control and send jobs to your laser wirelessly. The third way is through a browser on your computer. The computer has to be connected to the same Wi-Fi router as the laser, 
but the smartphone app can send the job to the machine from anywhere. I also want to point out right now that even though you technically can send a job to the laser from anywhere, you absolutely should never run a job without being in close proximity to the laser. Think of the laser cam as allowing you to untether from your computer and send jobs to it wirelessly, but not so that you'll be able to be away from your machine. So if you're not using this as a direct link to Lightburn, you first need to save a job from Lightburn or Laser Gerbil as a file that both LaserCam and your laser can understand. In this case, I'll be using Lightburn to save a G-code file. To do this, I simply set up the file as I normally would, and then I go to File, Save G-code. This will save off a G-code file of my project. I then have to figure out a way to send this to the laser cam. The easiest way to do this is to open a browser with the IP address that I got when setting up my laser cam on my phone to access the Beagle Engrave page. There you should be able to see your camera and have access to all of the same controls that you will have on the phone app. If you're familiar with the Beagle print page for 3D printing, this will all look very familiar to you. I then click on the files list and then click on upload to send the G-code file to the micro SD card on the device. Once the file is on the device, it can be controlled from either this browser interface or from the phone app. One of the best things about this is that you can add as many jobs to this list as the card can hold, and you can just choose whichever one you wanna burn at any time. You are not limited to the last job you uploaded to your laser. From here, I can also download the G-code file back to my computer or phone. I can delete it from the card. I can send the G-code file to the machine ready to burn. I can frame the G-code file or load and start burning the file directly. I'm gonna just load it and then click back on the status and control panel. Again, at the top, I could just click on carving to start the job and quite conveniently pause or stop the job altogether. Here at the bottom, I can use the arrows to move my laser. I can also click on the center to home the machine. Here I can pick the speed at which this all works and then fire my laser if I choose to do so. Down here, I can move to a particular location or see where my laser module is at any time. When I'm ready to go, I just click on carving and let the laser run. While it is working, I will be able to see the job in real time through the camera, which is a great way to keep an eye on everything, but protect my eyes from the laser. After the job is done, it will show as complete and I am free to run another job. During each job, the laser cam will record a time lapse of the project unless you turn that setting off. There are three different modes when it comes to the time lapses for the machine. You can access these by clicking on the setting in the time lapse video dropdown. The first setting is a normal time lapse video, which will simply record a regular time lapse of the job from beginning to end. The next mode is called a clean time lapse and is much like the video I showed before with my Beagle Cam on my 3D printer. This mode will burn for a predetermined amount of time and then move the laser head away before capturing the image. This way, instead of seeing a time lapse where you see the laser head swinging all around, it looks like the project is making itself like magic. This, of course, will add time to the overall job, but looks really cool in the end. The third is a time lapse video where you choose a capture time and duration for how long you want the camera to record. Essentially, this is the mode to use the camera to capture a time lapse of essentially whatever you want, not just the laser. I'm still not 100% sure on how you initiate this mode without sending the job to the laser, but if you do know how to do that, be sure to let me know in the comments. And then of course, you can also just completely turn the time lapse mode off altogether, so it won't record anything while doing one of your jobs. Again, when it comes to the Beagle Engrave software, it is available through the browser on my computer, but it is also fully functional on my phone as well. Essentially, pretty much all of the features and settings that I have on my computer are controllable through the phone app. They also sync together, so if I send something to the files list on my computer, it will automatically show up on my phone app. 
The last thing that this whole setup comes with is a flame sensor that you can hook up to your laser. This device is then set up to the laser cam via Bluetooth and will start monitoring your jobs for flames. The flame sensor comes with a double-sided adhesive strip to mount it right on the laser module itself. I did not personally mount it on my setup because I will probably be using this laser cam on multiple machines. I however did hook it up to test it to see what it would do. It will not only set off a pretty loud alarm, but it will pause the job and move the laser head away from the area that it was working on. One other great thing here is that for whatever reason, if it was a false alarm, you can resume the job from where it left off. Overall, in case you can't tell by now, I'm really a fan of the laser cam from Mintian. Even if you have a device like this Xtool D1 that already has Wi-Fi functionality, it's still an upgrade that adds the camera control for the direct placement and light burn, as well as the ability to store and run multiple G-code files directly. I wanted to thank Mintian for sending this awesome device to me. Also be sure to check out the video description for a promo code that Mintian was nice enough to send to my viewers. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.